I'm Terry Thornton. I'm Curator of Education here at The Modern, and it's my great pleasure to welcome you to Tuesday evenings at The Modern. Um, I think many of you know, but in case anybody doesn't, Tuesday evenings is a weekly series. Um, it's been a really good September lineup. Now we're moving into October. October is kind of out of this world. And um, then we're going to end up in November um, with Lori Simmons and her husband, Carol Dunham, kind of talking about what that means to be two artists working together throughout life and such. So um, we will break for um, November 6th because it's election day. And I know where every one of you will be if not voting, sitting at home waiting for the uh, results. So I don't want to interfere with that. So we, we're taking a break on uh, November 6th. OK. My husband is going to die when I do this. I forgot my glasses. <laughs> so I have my sunglasses, which are prescription. So I'm going to do this with my sunglasses. <laughs> uh, I'm that lady from the Great Gardens, you know? <laughs> All right. Um, next week, like I said, this is a weekly series. <laughs> so hard to take me seriously. This is serious. Um, next week, we um, get a bit of a preview of uh, the museum's upcoming exhibition, Lori Simmons' Big Camera, Little Camera, which I hope you all know about. Um, Simmons will be in conversation with the exhibition's curator, Andrea Carnes. Um, I have to tell you, this is going to be such a generous exhibition with an, an awful lot to offer, and next Tuesday evening will be absolutely the same. So um, I hope you will make a point to be here. Um, my advice is to come early to assure a seat. So I uh, hope to see you back. Tonight is um, something special. Um, and because I want to allot plenty of time for it, my intro might not be as exuberant as I'd like. And this is one that deserves a lot of exuberance. Um, we have the great fortune of hearing from two notable Texas artists who many of you know and respect. Um, Iva Kennard, who was born in Dallas, but now lives and works in Houston, is here in conversation with Dallas artist Shelby Meyer, who was born in Denver, Colorado, making his way to Dallas by way of Fort Worth. Um, Iva is a multimedia, multimedia performance artist who received her BFA um, from, the, uh, from UT Austin in 2014. She has shown her work throughout Texas, including solo and two-person shows at Matchbox Gallery um, at Rice University in Houston, the Reading Room this year, um, in Dallas, and um, oh, also uh, universe, uh, Rice University was this year as well, so she's been very busy. Um, the Art League of Houston, which was last year, and TWU in Denton in 2016, where she showed with Shelby Meyer, and I will let them tell you about that exhibition if they choose to, or you can save it for Q&A. Um, she is a recipient of a DMA um, Claire Hart DeGoya uh, Memorial Fund grant, and has had residencies with Sojourn Montrose in Houston and with collab projects in Austin. Um, she was recently selected for New American Paintings, number 138 West, and has an upcoming show at Culture Hole in Dallas. Shelby received a BFA from TCU and his MFA from SMU. He um, has most recently had exhibitions at Culture Hole and Beef House in Dallas as well as having work at the Nasher Sculpture Center and the DMA. Um, as mentioned, he showed with Iva at TWU in Denton, and he currently has work in Clay Plus Things at Site 131 in Dallas. As noted in the announcement for tonight's presentation, um, while Betsy, um, who wrote for Glass Tire, said that um, Kennard, quote, Kennard understands the importance of sincer sincerity and has a unique ability to infuse that sincerity with a gen with gen and genuine humor with a dismissive irony that drives the work. Shelby has noted that his work may or may not be in search of, for sincerity and um, authenticity within irony manifested in physical, 
procrastination slash objects. I am enamored with the sincerity and necessary dismissiveness in both their work, and I'm looking forward to whatever they have in store for us tonight. Please join me in welcoming Iva Kennard and Shelby Meyer. Can we hear it in the room? Okay, great. Yeah, they can hear you. You're, it, I, that looks like a painting. <laughs> Where are you? Okay. Okay. Yeah, because you used to live in totally Fort Worth. New, I feel like it might not be totally new to everyone else that's in there. Maybe it is totally new to someone who hasn't visited the museum. I just thought this would be a great opportunity to shed some uh, new perspective on the work. On the paintings from a phone, yeah. I, I... Yeah, so <laughs> thinking about space and how we actually view work, um, I don't know how much you get to actually Yeah, you don't, you don't only see the sides. <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> Thank you. Well, have you spent much time here? Um, uh, like two or three times. I mean, I've been more, re I saw the, um, the last Murakami show and uh, Glenn Ligon a couple years ago. Uh, yeah, I've, I've been, I'm familiar with some of it. Is, yeah. Let me see, is there any, uh, which, which room are you in now? This is just the beginning. It's towards the front? Okay. Um, feel free to like, <laughs> point out anything that you want You're on the first floor, right? Rothko's. It looks red. It's red. Is it red? Is it also orange? Um, it's it's kind of it's like a salmony sort of orange, kind of yeah, a little bit. Yeah. Oh, was it not playing before? Oh, okay. So is it on the screen? Yeah, you're louder okay. now. Um, I'm just being a little quiet. Um, this is our friend Chris. Chris. Oh, hi, Chris. How are you? <laughs> can, you can you see me? Okay. Hey. Hello, everyone. Um, yeah, I don't. I just felt like I, uh, coming to do a lecture at the Modern is a, kind of like a homecoming thing for me, and I just figured is that a I might as well like kind of. It's like that John Mayer song, like "Run Through the Halls of My High School." Oh, that song was. You know, ridiculous. I want to scream at the top of my lungs. Yeah. That kind of thing. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Implying that the real world is an actual place. <laughs> okay. Um, so, okay, yeah, you, I know this room. I've been there. There's all these Philip Guston paintings? Yeah. Philip. So I think, like, I mean, the main reason I, I was thinking about how, how I can much lecture has become on the wall. about is that kind of like get looking at still images and not really experiencing the work and it's total, so I felt like maybe this would be a way to kind of bring everybody into the galleries, so it's kind of like, look at everything. Okay, so we're seeing our work on the phone like we're used to. Okay. Got yeah, it. but the same as like, I don't know. I mean, is this having the same effect as it does when you stand in the space? 
Um, you feel like you're really experiencing kind of the silhouette to the... It's, I see sort of a greenish on the top and maybe a bluish on the right. How close can you get without anyone like yelling at you? I don't know, how close can I get before I, I don't see the lines Too yet. close? <laughs> Basically not past the stand. Oh. Oh, you're cutting out a bit. Uh, Shelby. Okay. I mean, well, I don't know. I might start the presentation without him if he's, if he's gonna. I'm calling him to see if he'll pick up. This cement fortress is a little bit hard for FaceTime. Shelby, can you hear me? Well, I'll um I'll see if he'll call back, I guess, but put this on the side. You can start without him, I think. Um well this is um some of my work. Since Shelby isn't in here, we'll just talk about me while he's gone. Um, which I'm sure is just as good. Um, so this is um, a video that I made, um, which was sort of intended to be viewed on a phone anyway, so it sort of is appropriate for uh, this Skype call thing. Um, I'll play this. Full screen it. So this is a video called Half My Shoes, which was literally made for an Instagram performance. Um, and um, the, I guess it relates to the idea of like viewing art mostly through a phone, um, which is, we do see a lot of art on Instagram. And I, I can tell that's what Shelby was thinking with the <laughs> Skype call thing. Is he? Calling me or am I calling you? Hey, you're back, you're back. We see you now. It cut out there with the, uh, you got too close to the art and it just, it freaked out. Did Chris do, okay, it wasn't Chris. That's good. Because you did get really close and he is the guard. Yeah, oh yeah, I see you. Yeah, yeah, this is a good place for selfies. Yeah, if we can like turn it around, hold on. And it's nice, it's all sunset-y. You got some nice light out yeah. there. I mean, it's also, I think was part of this is realizing how great of a sunset uh, we typically have this time of year and everyone's gonna be trapped inside that drab lecture hall. Wall. Yeah, you guys, are, you guys are missing this beautiful experience outside. <laughs> It's like you should be out there, and but, not in here, but... I'm going to go back to where I was going. You're flipping a lot. I'm trying to flip my phone. I know. I don't know how to... <laughs> I, I see like blue. You're coming up on Jenny. With my phone update, so I'm trying to live with this. Look at this nice blue light. Yeah, it's, it's the Jenny. The Jenny Holster. I don't know yeah. how well this is going to hold up on the screen. I see I don't know if I go... What happens if I go the, horizontal? Trading that's a life for a life, that's really powerful, uh, is fair enough, you guys can read, but. <laughs> but if I walk with it, then you really don't know. Uh -oh. Uh -oh, that's not the phone glitching, uh, that's just me walking at the same speed as an artwork. <laughs> Thank you. Thank so you for the commentary. Yeah. That's yeah. how fast the artwork And then it hits the wall, okay. About that fast. But then if you go um, the opposite direction, it's like twice as fast, It looks like right? you're going twice as fast, yeah. yeah so, yeah. hi, Chris. And so if hi, you Chris. go this way, you really can't read it. Those a because it's most down, val valuable. B, because I'm going upstream then versus long something. downstream. Unquest unquestioning? Stinning love? I uh, can't read that. it. 
you keep flipping the phone. It's kind I'm, of hard yeah. I'm trying to keep it steady, but I'm also you're not doing a very good job of that. Um, I really think we should definitely catch. The I like that painting actually. You like this painting? Yeah, I do. It's really lumpy. It's nice. See, that's what I look for. Is you like see the lumps? Yeah, yeah, I can see the lumps, see the lumps in the, the frame, the texture. Look, you can see the glass, like with the. I can kind of see the glass. My favorite part. Yeah. When he holds her piece. Let's hold on. Yeah, go back to the. It's like the nice glow it gives my face. Oh yeah, you could do selfies in there too. Like this whole museum like, is. Look how white my. Ugh. And oh wait, and this is kind of nice. You can see the reflection of the words on your glasses, so you look like it's like matrixy kind it's of. It's like I am, I am the. Yeah, yeah. Is that working? Yeah, yeah. Look up a little bit. Yeah, left or right. Yeah, yeah. That's good. <laughs> and Chris is in the shot too, so that's even better. Yes. Yeah, there's... Hi, Chris. Hi, All Chris. All right, well, let's keep moving. <laughs> there's not that much work to see, only because like half of it's behind. Well, really, it's not even there because there's all these things in the way. There's things in the way. What's in the way? Hold on. I'm... Let me turn this around. Which we're getting a little disoriented here. Where are we? Is that a Chamberlain? Ever, yeah, this is the Chamberlain. Okay. This great Ed Richet painting that I'm a big fan of. It's beautiful. Um, I wish flat. I was there seeing it. They can see it. Yeah, I'm sure they've all seen it before. I've seen a postcard um, of it. But all, but not like this before, right? This is a totally new, uh, valid perspective of seeing artwork. From the phone. I wonder. It's a little bit. Like, it's like. kind of like a cloud. I'm. It's uh, kind of fuzzy. It's a little bit, it might be cutting out again. We got you. No, okay. Um, but my favorite, really, it's very sparse, minimal works. I thought, um, we got this. Oh, yeah, the Donald Judd. That's cool. That just makes you want to climb right up it. Well, you know. yeah, you might, Chris will stop you, but you can try. <laughs> <laughs> Chris won't. Chris won't let that happen. I promise. I won't. I told him. Uh, like, like to think how you get a walk. Oh, you're walking on the. Ah, uh, that's uh, a little risky. Is Chris doing like, any? I can walk on it. Is he making Chris. any moves? But I couldn't like. I couldn't like bend over and like touch it. You're not allowed to touch it with your hands, but you are with your feet. On only kind of thing. Do they like, have rules about? So that you keep your flip flops on. Keep oh. your. But they don't give you shoes, like special shoes, like Ernesto Neto or anything. I think it's basically that, there's no touching with the hands. Yeah, just keep those oils off of it. Because you've got grease on your hands, but your feet are clean. Cleaning <laughs> is human oils. To touch. Okay. You yeah, you got to protect the art. But in Asher, and someone told me if you had a friend look on the other end of the Donald Judd, he'd. <laughs> I don't know, Chris That's a great story. Thank you for telling. You want to look on the other end? I'm gonna come to the other end, and maybe you can like. So, like, if you just look through the hole, <laughs> you might be able to see. Thank Chris. you for demoing. I can almost Kinda. see this Chris. This is a very long channel. Okay. He seems much further away than he really. Is. Yeah, it's he seems further than. Yeah. I don't know. Um, Three yards. How long is that one? I mean, I'm only like. You're cutting out a little bit, Shelby. Yeah, we're moving into the gallery, so it might oh. be getting a little choppier. Yeah, I can see the I I can see the line in the middle, but I can't see. I mean, that's like the whole the shadows. So you really lose the effect, I guess. Right. It just it looks. Um, I don't know. It's it's kind of uh, the pixels Powerful, are. I guess. I don't know. Maybe this one just doesn't hold up as well. <laughs> that one does not. No, you no. probably should see that one in person. But um, I'm sure you're getting a good uh, view on it. I'm cutting out even more only because I'm going deeper. In. Well, you're, it's like splunking it here. You're kind of cave diving in this. Okay, I see this, the, the, the sand back. So this is. Slower. I'm going to go slower to maybe see if maybe. I can see a line on the floor and a line. That's exactly what it is. Yeah, going up. And then another <laughs> one. Yeah, kind of. But, but I, I mean, I've seen point. this one in person. Is that yarn? Is that like string? Yeah. What are we, can you describe it? I mean, you're probably gonna cut out too much. Yeah. But... Um, let's see how close. This is one, I'm not gonna touch it, but. You promise? 
Can you walk through it? I am about to cross the threshold. Is that allowed? It's not allowed. I think that's that's the power of it, really. This guy. You're on a power trip if you're like walking over the art. That's probably. I don't not know. Allowed. Maybe he's on a power trip for making me think. Just because you're an invited artist doesn't mean you can like step over the art, or you know. That's, <laughs> I know that you already walked on Kristen the Carl Andre, me. but. Um, like visual optics. You can't on actually screen. tell. Uh, what? I'm see, is it like op art? What do we? It looks like a bunch yeah, of. Yeah, it's kind of op art. It's kind of. You're very attracted to the it? line, the thing with the lines. On the screen, I'm sure. <laughs> you know, you're you're kind of cutting out a lot. I don't know if you should just come back and like. Back this way. I mean, there's really. After every, this is pretty much everything that's on. Okay. Because the upstairs is, they're doing, they're getting ready for the, the next Upstairs show. is getting ready. I'm going to start moving a little faster. Okay. Uh, just. I, I see the blue room again. Get started uh, on this room. I just wanted to. Yeah, yeah. It's a nice walkthrough. I feel like the sun is almost entirely set. It looks dark. It is not helping. But Being near the windows? Well, there's a nice glow. Are you having to turn the lights on yourself, or did they leave them on for you? Uh, no, they left the lights on for that's, us. That's nice. Um, They're that considerate. They knew. Okay. Hey, Chris. Um, but I'm making my way back. Okay. Cool. Keep talking until I get there. Well, it's just quite a I long mean, walk. It's a conversation, though. So. I'm not we schizophrenic. Can keep talking this whole time. So how have you been? I'm I'm good. I've been in Houston. It's been raining a lot, um, which is affecting a lot of construction. Uh, how have you been? Should we go this way? Should we go this Are way? you lost? Okay. You said you grew I up know. with this museum. I know. I just want. I don't want to. It's not that big. Go the way I should go. Oh yeah, just just go over this. Don't worry go about ahead. the stanchions. Those are just for show. Um, yeah. They always have really nice plants up here. Do, are they are they fake or are they real? I can't tell with this camera view. <laughs> Do you want to <laughs> you feel need them? Me to touch them? Yeah, touch them. You're, it's not art. You're allowed. It's very real. Okay. It's a real plant. <laughs> um, it uses real water. That's real soil. That's nice. I feel like you don't um, see that so much anymore. No, but I feel like a place real like this, they would they don't pull any they don't pull any punches. They've they are the modern. Yeah. I see, um, I almost see the, uh, is that Ed Blackburn? You would know this more than I would. You're right. But yeah, I'm, okay. The best part is museums provide all this information. What's the best part? Museums, they like to leave labels for you so you know what you're looking oh, at. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's the great thing about museums is they tell you. Yeah, it's Ed Blackburn. So you're almost here. Okay, good. Yeah, I'm, I'm literally. You're you're cutting out. This is about to get yeah. We're about oh, okay. to. Okay, it's about to get real. The, okay. The lecture. You, you're definitely cutting out. There, there he is. Hey. Pause. Okay, I guess we can. We're here, so we can do this in person now. We keep doing we can, oh, oh, yeah, that's a little bit too much feedback. I don't know. Yeah, you probably need Yeah, I'll, I'll... I'm trying to do it. No, I'm, maybe I should do it. X. Welcome, Shelby. I, I played Sorry this. For, I played this one already when you cut oh, out, but Oh, we, that's good. Yeah, we can I talk. I think it, it works out perfectly. Yeah, yeah. Um, um, but, so, welcome to... Fort Worth Modern. Oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so how much did you say, or how much did you talk about this? Um, I, I, I spoke about it. Let's you said see. everything you need to say? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Um, um, and then this is, well, we should put this in the second slideshow. There we go. Let's get this thing going. Yeah, yeah. Can, uh -huh. Now that we're halfway through, we can start. Yeah, uh, so I felt like um, it was kind of like a nice segue 
Iva showed me this video that she had made just kind of like randomly for some Instagram. It was an Instagram performance residency, which is very prestigious. But not everyone um, gets those. That's true. I haven't been invited to do one yet, so that's definitely a, a very uh, prestigious thing. You just have your personal Instagram account, I just, right? Yeah, that's all I have. Don't I don't have a... Them. I thought about trying to make my personal account like a... A performance a per, Or like a studio, or like... Yeah. I was thinking about like... Uh, Shelby David Myers yeah, Studio. Yeah, like Kunst Studio, right. so it would like, sound like foreign, like a German <laughs> art studio. That makes it yeah. more yeah. Uh, special. Yeah, I think it would trick people into thinking that I'm, yeah, I'm not true. from America or Texas. Right. Um, but anyways, <laughs> <laughs> so but anyways, I figured this, this, this whole little uh, experiment that I got to do with everybody on the lecture was kind of like when Terry invited me, I was like, how can I make this something a little more fun for myself than talking about myself? Or Iva for an hour. <laughs> 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 okay. Well, I also want to talk in. about your work. Right. Um, anyways, so uh, kind of tied into this omelet bar project that I just recently did um, this summer at the Culture Hole, um, which for me, when I proposed the idea of an omelet bar to Jeff and Greg, they didn't. I, I was a. I was surprised how quickly they took to it before I even really explained my entire concept behind it. But for me, a big part was kind of creating a line and kind of creating a space. Uh, that people don't really know what to expect or kind of their expectations are kind of up in the air and they don't really know exactly what they're walking into even though it's very clear it's an omelet bar. So um, what was funny about the installation was there's this, this other show that was up at the power station. If I have to explain, the culture hole is like a, a small hole in, it's a gallery under a gallery. Yeah, it's like an art space. I, wouldn't, I don't know if I'd call it a gallery. But, but okay. Yeah, it's an art it's space. A, it's, yeah. under, it's a hole. Yeah, so, um, and it's it's a hole filled with culture. Right. Is the idea of culture. Omelet culture. <laughs> yeah, omelet culture, uh, among other, other types right. of culture. Sometimes surfing. Uh, surfing very recently, yeah, yeah, which is pretty exciting. Um, but for me, like, I don't know, like, for some reason, the idea of an omelet bar as an object or a thing seemed much more than just someone making omelets for everybody. There's this whole kind of social practice of waiting in line for your turn to get an omelet and this uh, act of watching somebody make something for you seemed like a kind of parallel to things that were happening um, in the art world, especially with this Adam Gordon show that's happening. So this is the space after I added lights. There were no lights in the show like at the, the time. You would walk you in there very dark um, and only like two people would come through at a time. Um, basically what I set up, this is kind of the beginning of the line. You have to walk down these stairs and you go to find all these stanchions and um, Basically, I gave people plates and drinks and all these kinds of things to hold in their hands so they wouldn't be able to be on their phones all the time or kind of like at least present some sort of obstacle for them, like for them to, to have to contend with instead of just standing there looking on their phones the whole time waiting to get into this hole, which really was just an omelet bar. So those are some ceramic pots that I had made, I'm never really intending them for any use except they hold ingredients great. Uh, for omelets, and then I invited my uh, very functional, very ceramic, yeah. um, and I invited my friend Doug to make omelets. What I didn't tell people uh, whether was whether I was going to be the one making omelets or whether there was going to be somebody else. And a big part of this whole ordeal was that you couldn't see into the hole until it was your turn to get in there. So you don't know exactly. And I wasn't expect. present in the space. I was hiding somewhere else um, behind a big, you were scary hiding in a door. Hole. Yeah, I was hiding in a whole or other maybe hole. Maybe in a museum, I don't yeah. know. Um, so you'd be waiting there. Um, for me, it was a big test to see just how much people are willing to wait. To wait. For an omelet. To put up with. Or some, the experience the, of waiting. And then, to see and then art. maybe they might, they might kind of be sitting there and thinking like, why am I waiting for this, for omelet, this omelet for so long? What am I doing here? But there, it's made by a, like a professional. <laughs> yeah, Doug. Chef. So he I chose Doug. Role. He's a chef. Um, makes good omelets. Uh, he's clean. That was like a big part. <laughs> As I was like, That's I wanted somebody who knew how to be a clean chef. I didn't want to present people with this kind of question important. as to whether they actually want to eat the omelet or not. Because I had hoped after you wait 90 minutes, um, it would nice be, clean it'd be a good, clean omelet. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what that means. <laughs> but it's clean is yeah, all that yeah. matters. So oh. um, we, can, we can keep talking about this for a little bit because I feel like there's one other thing I need to say. But basically... Yeah, people waited 90 minutes, and I was really surprised by how many people would actually wait along. How for an long they were willing to wait for an omelet when yeah. there were other breakfast places. They could have left at any moment. Everywhere. There was nothing like keeping them there. In Deep Ellum. Other, other than, than a, a free omelet. Or this dedication to, the, to you. Or I to guess, the yeah. idea of art. They're like, they really was, were like cheering for me. Like they do you think it was something. you, or do you think it was they were that committed to like 
finding out what the art was going to be. Good question. But I wasn't there. It was the other. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't there at all. Uh, I was in this like back room. So if you find if you finally like waited and got your omelet, and then you went through this big scary door. So was it like once they had the omelet, you would talk to them? No, I waited until they were completely done. Oh. With, like their whole experience. Once they had finished the omelet. Once they were leaving planning to go home, when I would, you scared I would jump out and go, surprise! <laughs> when they were getting yeah. into their cars, you said, I'm here. <laughs> yeah, I'm actually here. <laughs> okay. Tricked you. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of this, and it's also kind of this funny food thing. I don't, I've been equating art and food a lot more lately, and this is kind of like a... a Your way of combining way the two. Of doing that. Yeah. yeah, I've combined some food and art too. Um, this one is something I've made, which is not as clean as your omelets, but it's, um, this is um, uh, toast and spaghetti um, that I have put up in my kitchen um, to remind myself to like be more mindful and like pay attention <laughs> while I'm cooking. Because I'm just like very forgetful kind of, I'll like leave the room. And so like this was put up over my toaster oven like to remind myself, don't leave. Yeah. Like you're not done. <laughs> Your toes are still there's, in a, the there's another step in this process. It's very nice, like art. I want to go to like the next. I want to know, like, also, what's the whole spaghetti thing? The that's spaghetti the toast, but what's wrong with the spaghetti? It's it's a solid. It's pinned up to the wall. It's solidly like it's melded like together. A single, it's a unit like, of like. So what happened there? I don't exactly know, but it was like <laughs> it was the t it was like the top layer of the spaghetti in the pot. I like scraped it out, and then it was solid solidly one piece, so I just pinned it to the wall, um, which seemed kind of sculptural. Yeah, I didn't know spaghetti could do that. It, yeah, I didn't mean either. <laughs> but um, this is sort of the more formal version yeah, that's a much of more the toast. Crisp. That's this is I, a little I cleaner. Want to it's a very nice object. It's, it's a nice it. object. It's the uh, official burned toast, um, <laughs> which came from the previous other. And it's nice because I get to like pick out. I'll go to the store and spend half an hour in the bread aisle just like picking out the right loaf like the right shape of yeah the right loaf shape because it's got to be sort of asymmetrical yeah um <laughs> it has you find to have a lot character. of symmetrical bread Is actually like yeah it's a real problem because it's so like factory <laughs> produced they have like a s systems for making bread perfectly similar which is not what we want no i like want it what you want. i want it to have some character <laughs> you know like yeah, you it's got to have like a special. personality yeah. to the bread so i like have lopsided. to i have to pick out the bread and then put it in the toaster oven and then Actually, I do have to watch it at this point. I'm more careful about burning it than I am about just <laughs> making food. Because I have to make sure that the whole, like, yeah. the process is I put it in the toaster oven and then I wait um, until the whole thing is like on a, fire. Um, that's how you know when it's done? It's yeah. like you wait and watch Yeah, I have toast. to wait for it to all be on fire. The toaster <laughs> oven has to be on fire. Okay. And then I have to so unplug it. So you have to get like a new toaster oven every time too, or you use the same? I've I've had to buy a couple of toaster ovens. <laughs> <laughs> it's the second cheapest at Walmart. Okay. It's not the cheapest, yeah, so but it's the, the second cheapest. Yeah, it's it's, it's yeah. like twenty dollars. So um, it's not too bad. Yeah. So I figured since we were talking about bread, we could, yeah. We could oh yeah, we, you cheap. got some bread too. You're um, actually good at cooking though. Yeah. So this is a loaf of bread <laughs> that I had made, um, along many other loaves of bread. This it looks like, more edible. This isn't totally perfect, but yeah, I have a very simple recipe like a five minute a day bread recipe. You get a, you get like a cast iron pot real hot and you just dump the dough in there. I don't have a cast throw iron the lid pot. On. Well, okay. that's, that's a, the step first, <laughs> the first step you need to take okay. home. So basically, I ended up baking a lot of bread in grad school. Uh, Why were you baking? Was that <laughs> because you just had so much free time? Uh, that, yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> I just had a lot of free time in grad school. There's not a lot of things happening. You're really just bored. Yeah. Uh, most of the time. You're not too busy. Yeah, you're not super busy doing all these other things for other people that you you would rather that makes be sense. doing. So you worked on baking and a cooking. A little bit. I mean, if part of it is like kind of a joke with someone who talked about like I don't have time to cook for myself. So I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna start. You could only cook. For <laughs> I'm gonna yourself. start cooking for myself, and maybe <laughs> that'll become something. But so right. it never really started out thinking about bread as a sculpture. But what ended up happening was a lot of the bread would be left in my studio, or like pieces of the bread. You made too much bread. I would make too much bread. I couldn't eat it fast <laughs> enough. A, because it would go stale like within two days. Like, I don't know what they put in like new bread, but like, real <laughs> bread really only lasts for like a day real or two. Real bread. Yeah. Well, it's probably preservatives that will just give yeah. you. Yeah. So this something. this is like flour, salt, water, and yeast. Okay. And that was that it. seems like, kind of simple. Very simple. Yeah. Which is like everything I was I was going for. 
quick and easy. But it didn't keep. No, it didn't keep. So what happened is I, would, I kept having all these scraps of bread around my studio, and I started to think about the kind of act of sculpture and its relation to baking and eating, and this kind of mixing all the ingredients together, creating a mass and putting in this pot, and then it comes out and it becomes something else. Yeah. And then so I have this kind sense. of this raw material that I start cutting into and start carving away at. I wouldn't even cut half the bread half the time. I just would kind of tear it. But you were just cutting, eat you were piece. eating it. Yeah, I would eat the bread like yeah. for breakfast or like, you know, I'd bring it on for lunch and like I would make, sometimes I'd make sandwiches, other times I just would have a piece of bread with whatever I was making. But okay. uh, what so ended up happening, the... so these, this piece. Where did these come um, from? So this is a cairn of my leftover bread that I had cast into iron and then I painted so it, it was, okay. with an enamel to kind of imitate the cast iron pots or the Le Creuset uh, cast ironware that I was baking the bread in. So it became this kind of like bread meeting its maker, becoming its maker kind of thing. That, um, that almost makes sense. Almost makes sense, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's so, cool. Yeah, I don't, I don't have these, this cookware. Yeah. Um, so we're like thinking about kind of trying to see what things are happening in my life that I can kind of pull from to, to make artwork or kind of realizing that like you don't have to go and create something you kind of can just find whatever is there so, to kind of jump off of. Right okay so that's um, a nice segue into my next it's not a sculpture it's um <laughs> this is um, based it was my first apartment after college which was the basically every apartment that I've had has had leaks um, so this is the bathroom, and this would keep me up at night. You can see the top, the, like water, the AC would drip into the bathtub, and it would like I could just hear it all night. Um, so I put this like styrofoam box there um, to like catch it, to like it wouldn't make the same sound. So I was just like, <laughs> just a quieter sound. It was a quieter sound, <laughs> sort of muffled with the the insulation of the styrofoam. Um, but this is sort of the, the construction of that. Some pencils and some like a ruler, I think maybe, or like a stir stick from Home Depot possibly. Efficient. Yeah, it's some, and some string, cause you know, this is what I had at the time. Um, you know, you just graduate, you don't really have a lot. Yeah. You just kind of, are, you're, in you're working with, and yeah. Two pencils and a, and a you're working with what you have. And this is a video, this is actually a different apartment, but it's a similar situation. Um, yeah, we were only there for two months because we told them they just, it, this happened basically once a week at least in both bathrooms. Was there rain or not? Or no, this was not, there was no rain. This no was, rain? This is the least from no, there was no, no there was no again. rain. Neither of these involved rain. That's frightening. Um, it was just the, 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 room, the apartment above ours was like leaking into ours. Yeah, that's really, that's gross. Yeah, so, um, <laughs> so we moved. But this, this, I was living with my brother at the time, but we, we moved to uh, um, a house which was just us, so that was better. But um, it sort of inspired um, some other founds that I've made. This is like my current studio before I um, like put in walls and built it out. I'll show you this, uh, this video clip. This is um, a fountain made out of the trash from the garage that I was like basically just clearing everything out from the people that lived there before. Um, so it's just a nice, like, I was, like, combining things to amuse myself in this, like, constant fountain series. Um, and I've made a, I'm, I'm making more fountains now. This is the last one I made at, um, in Rice at uh, Matchbox. The paintings are Christina McCall's. It was a two-person show. But um, the fountain in the middle is, um, my like sort of sculpture installation thing. Um, and this was again from like um, sort of some hurricane debris because we keep getting hurricanes. Every it's sort year. of yeah. the 100 year hurricane is now the annual hurricane. Yeah. Um, so Weird. yeah, it was crazy, right? <laughs> um, so this is a lot of the, some of the trash from that and it's, uh, I'll show a video of some of the close ups. Of this. <laughs> ceiling fan blade. <laughs> yeah, it's a ceiling fan blade. And this was cool because it like, uh, oh wait, cool. uh, 
Uh, if anyone needs to take a restroom break, we can. <laughs> that, that could that, that would be might a, have triggered something. that could yeah. be now, but um, <laughs> it's fine if you need to go. Um, so this was um, it was also nice because it was a self-sustaining like ecosystem sort of thing because there were plants on this installation and the falling water would like water the plants mm -hmm. and there was also like a tree stump that I found on the side of the road like someone was doing yard work and cut down a tree and that actually started like growing and flowering wow. while it was in the fountain Great, yeah because yeah, it was up for a month <laughs> um, I mean the people at Rice they didn't know I was going to do this but um, <laughs> they were worried about it leaking, and I assured them it was fine. Like, there yeah. were five tarps down. But did you really know? No. Yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> I was crossing my fingers, though, and it was okay. Um, but it's, it's nice that people trust us with things like this. I don't know if you have that experience. They, it's kind of a crazy... I know. It's, it's a weird thing. They um, think we know. But um, so this is sort of my, like, way of uh, building things sometimes is cobbling, um, which was featured in an SNL sketch, um, which always be cobbling. It's the cobbling phrase. as in like making shoes? Make, well, one, okay, one definition is making shoes, and then the other one is like hastily putting things together with available materials. So this is like a nice combination of both of those. My friend Haley asked me to fix her shoe, so <laughs> I did that by cobbling, co you know, cobbling both cobbling together. Right. In order to cobble. Right, so that's like a, a paint sample from Home Depot is to keep the shape of the shoe and the ankle, and then there's a sock to make sure it's not, you know, and then there's a ton of rubber bands. So I can't um, even tell what it is on a little screen. Like, it really is, I have to see it on a big screen. Um, yeah, it's. Yeah, that makes more sense. Now. Yeah, it's, so it's a cobbled, <laughs> cobbled shoe. Mm -hmm. um, but that's like a lot of what I make is cobbled. This is an installation of all cobbled objects, um, which is. Um, a sort of uh, performative thing. Um, there were strings attached to each of the five things in this room, and you would cut the strings, and then they would, some action would happen somewhere else in the room. Here's a close up of one of them. So this was sort of like a, this was back when it's harder to kind of get away with things. Um, in galleries, because there's like people. Yeah, there's like <laughs> participants. You really have to think about like people want to touch the work. That's why there's people like Chris. There's out people there. that don't quite know. So, yeah. yeah, Chris is really helpful with <laughs> yeah. that. Um, but so, but this was back when I was like in school, so I could kind of, like, I cares? could tell everyone before. If someone's dumb enough to put their finger. Yeah, don't underneath that. Because like, when you cut the, the string, the hatchet. Yeah, you know, it's pretty obvious it, what's going to happen. You can tell what it's going to do, and yeah. like a lot of this was about like anticipation and sort of um, like knowing what was going to happen, and like the 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 idea of like uh, knowing what was going to happen before and like after, like yeah. the process of it, and um, what you expect is maybe underwhelming. Um, like, so did you cut the strings, or did yeah, you? Yeah, well, I had other people in the class cut yeah. the strings. So, like, what happened? what you would expect. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't sure, like, maybe, maybe something was well, it pretty exciting. I actually, it, it was, it was some, t some of them were exciting and some of them were not actually as exciting yeah. as you would have thought. Um, but that's why I don't include after slides because sort of the, <laughs> the, the, the exciting thing is your imagination, like what your imagination does, and like what, with what these the before images, yeah, yeah the potential. Yeah of what Whatever. could happen, yeah, basically. Yeah, kind of jumps in the yeah. so this is um, yours. Just This is a big black circle. Um, <laughs> Are you sure? <laughs> which is kind of where it started. It was like, I want to make a big black circle. But uh, what I titled this piece after having it in my studio for a long time was, um, the title is like, it's crucial. It's, I survived a black hole and all I got was this stupid t-shirt. <laughs> um, which was, I was been doing like when I was in grad school, I was doing all this like really ridiculous, like wasting my time reading stuff about bread, making bread. <laughs> quantum physics, making bread, <laughs> learning about black holes because okay. I, maybe I felt like I was in one at the time or kind of <laughs> trying to parse everything out and understand. Okay. You just feel like you're really getting sucked into something. You don't know what it is. Um, but so there's this kind of this, Approach and I, I kind of chose this slide to follow this cobbling stuff also because part of the approach to this work was to make something that from a distance looks really nice and clean, like a nice perfect circle. And I don't have any great details of it. Well, I can see in in this one. Um, yeah, but part of it is also like it is. It was very like cobbled together, and then I really was like, 
I glued it all together in my studio, and then I was like, "How'd you move this? Oh, this looks kind of big." Right. And then I was like, "Oh shit, how am I gonna get this?" No, wait, did you actually? Was I that literally an actual... glued the whole thing in. The <laughs> Why studio. did you do that? I mean, because I knew I was just gonna figure it out later on. I was like, "Whatever." That's okay. Yeah, it's very cobbling esque. Cause it's very yeah. Shelby. Okay. <laughs> um, um, so what I ended up using was I cut the piece in half. I didn't bother measuring it, um, <laughs> so it's not a total perfect cut in half circle. Um, I had these L brackets that were like in place, and I. That we're just like on hand, and I was like, well, I can use these now and attach this thing. And if I decide I need to get other L brackets, I can, or different braces, I mean, um, I could. But what kind of happened is like, oh, these, these start making arrows that start pointing inward, start kind of pointing yourself in. Um, but I think a big part of this is also that kind of like dis an idea of like disappointment, or like things don't really end up uh, the way you, you'd expect them to be. Um, hence the like, that happens all I a got lot. is this dumb t shirt yeah. uh, kind of thing. Um, also, just thinking about ideas of like, we can't really anticipate everything, and a lot of times what we think we're about to experience isn't necessarily uh, what, what is we, actually going to happen. What we thought we were getting into. Yeah, yeah, kind of like situations like this, maybe. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, <laughs> interesting. <laughs> um, well, I don't know if you. Uh, yeah, let's go faster. <laughs> <laughs> so, this is another one that's like the other one, but it's. Um, it's even more, it, it cut its, the hatchet cut itself off of the wall, basically. Um, but it was a bottle opener that would just smash the bottles, and people were throwing bottles at the wall, too, because yeah. they were just, it, it was their last show in that gallery, so you don't really have to care about the space. So, yeah, we're supposed to talk about kind of like interaction. Oh, yeah, interact, of interacting scene. with art and the, yeah. the potential dangers or um, how people really like react will do, to art, like basically. will do things that you would never expect them to do. Yeah, you um, wish this as, is, <laughs> Yeah, this is I wish um, someone would do this. So this is like a, one of my favorite articles that popped up uh, I don't know. I was, remember this. That long ago. Um, but just I mean everyone wants to be that kid in yeah. some way. Yeah. No, I know there's one here and every it's like yeah. that would be great. So I was been like I was thinking about this kind of urges like art had kind of has this like push pull tendency. And I was struggling with making like a cat scratching post for my cats at home. Yeah, that's um, a. I would make this nice thing here. that was like made for them. I was like, this is this is what you, you must really like your on. cats. And you're gonna scratch this thing. Well, they would keep scratching the furniture oh, too. So, so trying to redirect them. Okay. But basically, what ended up happening was they they paid no attention to it, and I thought maybe it just wasn't good enough. So or big enough. So wait, or, let's see this one though. So is we that... can move to this. I ended up making this kind of uh, modernist cat tower. Intentionally for my cats, but also intentionally for my my professors or, <laughs> or, <laughs> or for viewers. You can't make everyone yeah. happy, Shelby. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. What I learned was that my cats didn't like it. It's and one I'm or the other. The jury's cats still out the... On, the, on the, it's a sculpture as well. Okay. Um, but I like it, and I felt like well, it, that's, was, it was a pretty uh, that's good. interesting, that's fun thing to do. Yeah. Um, but people kept asking me to make like human scale ones, which I was like, well, this is human scale. Is it too big? Like, it's eight feet tall. It's, it's a too big for them to climb on? Scale. It's too small for them to climb on. Okay. Not big enough for them to, like, to they, they're drawn to it, they want to touch it, they right. want to climb it, but, but it's they're just not too small. cats. So I ended up making like furniture yeah. um, for people to sit. So this, cause this works for both. Yeah, so this is A, the cats can scratch my furniture and it's intended to, to be, be scratched. scratched so yeah, okay, I get it. Jinx. Um, <laughs> And, and also, uh, yeah, so it's just kind of trying to deal, who, and the question is like, who is my audience? Is this really for your cats? cats or is this for, <laughs> for We shouldn't make work for your professors. That's never a well, good idea. Well, definitely it was not for them. If yeah. anything, it was kind of a tongue in cheek <laughs> thing. Right. Um, so this is kind of part of the show that I did at Beef House. Yeah, and um, I, I, I see the dice. You can skip over some of you this stuff. Sk Where do you want to skip to? Uh, I don't know, how, how do you feel? <laughs> you got anything you want to share? Um, Let's go here. Well. Oh, here. Oh, okay. Yeah, we can do this one. This is back to um, the uh, danger and uh, <laughs> things that aren't allowed in galleries, basically. This is a studio um, where I was setting up uh, water balloons. These are water balloons and confetti balloons, and then there's knives above them. Um, and so I would like, I would climb up the wall and then I'd cut the string that these are all attached to. So the strings would fall at the same time and like hopefully pop all the balloons at the same time. Um, when they cut the string. And then, um, so these, the water balloons would pop and they would um, fall onto, this was under it, these are drywall panels that had um, metal embedded in them that would rust through um, to create images of my plants. Mm -hmm. 
um, because those were like, not my cats, but I don't have any pets, so I've just got plants, you know? It's like, it's the same kind of thing where I was like making art for the things in my life, um, which were um, my plants. It's Jennifer and uh, Rudolph and... Which one's which? Rudolph is on the left, Rudy, and then Jennifer is in the middle. And then I didn't actually name, I didn't have the, <laughs> <laughs> I borrowed, that was a friend's cactus, so I didn't, I didn't I name, name him, cactus, no, I didn't so. name the, it's their cactus, I can't name it for him, yeah. you know? Yeah, that's true. So, but, yeah, um, but I did portraits of these plants, because I felt connected to them. I was with them you for like two or three them, years. We yeah, we were, yeah. we were roommates, or, you know, yeah. we were cohabitating the yeah. apartment. Um, um, but, so yeah, this was sort of a process performance thing, when I was like spraying this with, water to create these sure. images. So yeah, and then I guess, let's just go real quick to get like to like the last few things. These Is there are, a stopping point? These are, I don't think so. We're okay. Just until they stop us, I guess. <laughs> until people well, we've start got, leaving. Well, they, uh, I think, okay. Like, like a couple things. <laughs> All right. All right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> these, are, these are drawings um, on porcelain sketchbook pages. So I, um, it was, uh, basically I rolled out porcelain and I hand cut all these pieces of paper to look the like tabs to look like uh, sketchbook drawings I kind of tore this one were these in the beef um, show or these are in the beef house show okay. as part of my, my grad work so this like these kind of became like ideas or jumping off points for me to like kind of like different aspects that kind of were happening in the show these were all kind of like the sketchbook pages are kind of like referencing ideas from the sketchbook so these kind of things that weren't intentionally meant to be seen originally ended up becoming these kind of permanent long-lasting objects these are your favorite sketches yeah, or they're also kind of like combinations of other sketches. There's a little, some little lies and stuff in there okay. too. Um, but so they all kind of touched on themes that I felt like were, were in the work. I don't know, that's probably... Um, yeah, that's pretty good. I feel like that's... Um, I don't know if you wanted to get to any I feel of like I, want, I feel like we should get to some of your more recent work too though, right? Uh, no, it's no. fine. No. <laughs> I mean, that's, we're open for questions too. I, I think people want to see just a few things. Well, I don't know what they... Do you, did you have them in here or did they get... Oh. No. Oh, that's the, okay. We'll find them some other way. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't know what you were looking um, for. I'm just saying we're, we're at like 8 o'clock now, and I, uh, I feel like I'm better at answering questions than rambling. Um, I don't know how you feel. I'm, we're, I think we're both pretty good at rambling. Yeah. I guess that's true. We've been able to do it for the last hour. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, but I think yeah. we're... I don't know if we should keep going or people want to ask questions. I know people get antsy around 8 o'clock. Yeah, it's um, past the bedtime. Or? Yeah, we got to get home. Yeah. Silence. <laughs> uh, we'll just keep going then. Um, talk about this thing. Okay, um, this was... <laughs> Thank you for that yeah. introduction. Um, this was um, back when we were making work sort of specifically about time. This was a um, physical uh, installation recreating a screensaver. Um, I don't know if people here remember the screensaver, but it's called the flower box screensaver, and it would like this thing would bounce around um, and change shapes. Mm -hmm. And it was like, it was everywhere. It was like at the public library. It was like, you know, it was all over the place. But yeah. um, I don't know if people really use screensavers much anymore. But um, the fans would blow it around the room and it was sort of like um, an unfinished painting behind it to just sort of continue the time thing with mm -hmm. how it was representing time. Yeah. yeah, it was kind of like a, <laughs> talking about It was sort time. of meta, like I, yeah. It, yeah. Which is like, uh, and this kind of, I think maybe also like this idea of like taking a screensaver that is like Oh yeah, it was two dimensional. That's why we brought it, we were talking about Right, 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 the 2D thing with the 3D thing. Becoming sculptures and yeah. like a screen. I forgot about that segue, thank you. It's okay, I forgot about it too, <laughs> so just now. Um, but, so yeah, this kind of like screensaver time thing, um, we were in this show together at TW. Called Make Time. Called Make Time. Which was the whole premise. Which is all about, we were thinking about time, uh, not necessarily about the, like, the numbers of time and like 10, 30, 11 o'clock, but other not ways to like represent time. Not about like 8 o'clock or anything. Yeah, not like. Time is, it's just a number, you guys. It's, it's like, relative. Just, you know, it's relative. Um, just. Uh, so I ended up making, there was this kind of, I had a Roomba that I would end up watching way more than I should. Like, you, <laughs> like the idea is that like you turn it on time. and you go away, but like I just would sit there and watch it. So Watching you weren't vacuuming, you weren't spending time vacuuming, uh, but you were spending, was, you were yeah. watching your room. I wasn't spending time vacuuming, yeah, I was spending time Do you time have a TV? Watching. Yeah, I have a TV. <laughs> um, but, you know, okay. you, gotta, you can't watch TV all the time. No. Um, but also, so like part of this Just is curious. also just thinking about 
but like get really heady is like thinking about like um, robots taking people's jobs oh, and kind yeah. of like automated workforce things and thinking about this is something that's supposed to kind of free up our time. As technology progresses, we like to think that we're going to have more time in our lives. Everything's going to like. But we spend so much time like checking Instagram. We exactly. We spend more time checking any. emails instead right. of actually using our time to do something else. To um, so it kind of felt like there's this kind of like pointless task for this Roomba to beat around in this maze. Um, I titled it Theseus, which is based on like a Greek myth about someone who goes into the, the labyrinth to kill the Minotaur, and Athena gives him thread. Mm -hmm. And this thread is the way that he can find his way back. And I kind of was thinking about thread as this kind of like symbol for technology. It was this thing that was going to provide him this ability to, to end. Basically, sickness was kind of like he could kill a minotaur and then the world would be cured of, of illness or something. But um, yeah, so this is kind of where we lost track. Yeah. We'll talk about this. So it was at a, all. A, it's a painting. Yeah, it's a painting of... Of beer. I just, I like beer, okay? I like beer. Like, you can't, I, I don't know. I, I've never, I just like beer, you know? I, in high school, it's a shower beer. I've always liked beer. And I've never had a problem with it, but I just, you know, it's... I mean, do you do you like no, beer? No, I like beer. <laughs> like, I just had two before I came out here. You oh, okay? Um, In the yeah, it was while I was waiting for oh, you to call me. Oh, go have another. Lucky, one. okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, so that's a, so, an acrylic painting, though. Yeah. <laughs> I'm I've been doing painting a lot for the last two years, which Are these new I, old? Uh, uh, this is um, from this year. <laughs> so yeah, well, this is sort of me accepting <laughs> the water. It's like water damaged on the bottom, if you can see that. I was just constantly flooding in Houston. But um, my studio, it's just inevitable. But um, this is a painting of a couch, as you can see. Um, this is sort of like me turning sketches into paintings, yeah. which is not as far a leap as to sculptures. Yeah, but, right. And then this is a super long one. Um, yeah, I don't know. I see that. I like this one. <laughs> Thank you. I'm just kidding. All right. Well, uh, yeah, because it doesn't relate to cobbling. It looks like a, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> or beer. Thank so, you. Yeah. Um, uh, and then, uh, yeah, these are like my more recent from this year, basically. Yeah. Um, and so this is, is this is a painting? This is, this is like a painting. a Trump kind of thing? It's a Trump Lloyd painting of a cardboard sign, which, you know, we get panicked. They're everywhere. Like, yeah. I'd, so is this like from like someone's sign, or you just kind of... No, like, this is my sign. <laughs> you made this sign. <laughs> yeah. And then you painted it. Yeah. Yeah. It's not just like paste it on there. Right? <laughs> well, I've been coming up with like half resume or half, um, what is it? The letters that you send to employers. Uh, cover letters? Cover letters, yeah, like cover letters job. mixed with uh, Resumes signs. And... Oh, okay. So like these are your cover letters? Or are you sending yeah, these? Yeah, yeah. Like, these are my cover letter <laughs> <laughs> signs, basically. And I've got a couple more that I'm making, but that's like. Do so... you really send these in as cover letters or are you just saying? I'm. I, uh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good answer. But I haven't gotten any, you know, it's. Yeah. I'm just going to go through. Oh, man. Well, that's like a long, that's a four-minute video. Uh, do you want to, uh, four minutes? <laughs> yeah, like it's, the, it's four. What's the Vine version of it? Uh, this, is, this is the Instagram version. This is the Vine version. The well, Vine's only six seconds. But, okay, it's Instagram, it's 15, it's, yeah. it's a combination. To, so here's like some you can drawings. talk about more viewers. Yeah, sure. So this is some other work that I did um, in my thesis show. Um, I want to talk about the dice a little bit. Um, we had an image of that earlier. It's a little more a ways back because You mean the dice? It's hard to really document the, the piece itself only because it's kind of very... They're so spread out. Spread out. Yeah. Um, so the, the title shot. of the piece... Is a is what are the chances, and it's based. It was I think I counted about 950 die, um, 20 sided, 15 sided, 10 sided, and I literally just uh, take them and I throw them up in the space and they all scatter everywhere and they kind of it's kind of like a big bang kind of moment. <laughs> <Thinking about laughs> <Are> everything's <laughs> all condensed in this God? one area. <laughs> I feel like when I throw all this dice in the air, um, it's terrifying. <laughs> and then they just kind of scatter everywhere. But for me, I think about the fact that like all these dice are laying down, and they and if someone were to take the time and to count it all up, it would all add to some number. There would be a number. There would be a well, number. Yeah. We're counting, not multiplying. Two. No, it's all just addition. Okay. Um, yeah, I, don't, I wouldn't even <laughs> start with that, but that's a good point. Um, <laughs> but 
Um, but what happens is within the pieces, it's meant to be walked through and it's meant to be kind of within the space and people are gonna kick over dice and they're gonna move through the space. This is them um, in the space. Yeah, so you these are the kind floor. of some other sculptures stacked on top of sculptures. And uh, what was kind of happening in the show, I was trying to put everything together, even though it might not seem like they go together, trying to find some way to kind of draw connections to everything and the way that the dice, as you move through the space, you're changing the numbers, you're connected to the piece and you're kind of changing the environment that you walk through. Um, trying to draw attention to basically you within the space and basically the the impact you have, whether you consider it or not. If you're kicking dice, within. you would impact the number. Yeah, you would change yeah. the number. And then right. someone else would come along and change the number themselves. And then people start picking them up and throwing them. And <laughs> <laughs> the number keeps changing. And it's kind of like, for me, it, would, it seemed like a way to kind of show um, kind of this passive action that we, we kind of live day to day. These kind of Like you're affecting you, everything else in the yeah, world. Yeah, without you really ever thinking moving. about it, ever really feeling like okay. you're making a difference. You, in a way Makes that sense. you... No matter what you do, you're going to move matter and you're going to change things and it's kind of some some funny string, string theory kind That's of That's a stuff. very grand uh, yeah, proposal. Yeah, but it's just dice. Yeah, but. The crown. <laughs> <laughs> There's really, the it's thing very is, like, lofty. It's, what happens is like the number doesn't really, the number, the what it comes up to doesn't really matter. Well, the total of the things in the universe, I don't know, yeah. yeah it's, it's it kind of, it, it changes. Okay. Um, but so yeah, I guess I think, and so that kind of, the only thing I, I just want to show some of my research oh, okay. too, um, is kind of these these ceramic. These are up right now, right? Yeah, these are at Site 131 right now. I haven't seen um, it yet. Through I promise I'll go. They're open on Fridays. Okay. Or by I, I might not go then. Um, <laughs> I need to be back in Houston. <clears throat> they're open on Fridays or by appointment only. Okay. So if you want to make contact and let them know I'll you'll email be Joan. in town, uh, you can see it. But so these are kind of like riffing off of some of the porcelain sketchbook pages that I was doing along with some work that I was doing like out of undergrad in 2011. So these plates and the styrofoam cup were something that I did like right out of undergrad that I'd kept in that box. So that's the box that they <laughs> were stored in for quite some time and it's installed on the wall just a couple inches off the floor. Um, thinking about this is a gallery, they probably don't want people kicking Kicking it like the like, dice. Like I might, <laughs> I might want. Um, so these are just a, a few objects of kind of I'm thinking for me, a but these part are all of it, ceramic. These right? are all porcelain. Um, okay, porcelain. Yeah, casts of, of styrofoam boxes, which right. for me, a big part of it is conflating, or not conflating, but com comparing styrofoam as this material that's going to last forever. With to, a throwaway. To, well, styrofoam also does exactly, last a long time. To ceramics, which is a go. material that yeah. also lasts a very long time. And also thinking about as far as. The like, one's way more precious and. Yeah, right. But they're both going to last long and further, in, further into the world or right. the planet is much fur further than I ever will be. And trying to think about this kind of like, how many impacts do I make in the world? And like basically trying to like think more about what I'm using and, and how much that affects the world. Um, but also a big part of it for me was thinking about how I'm trying to understand passivizations. A lot of the archeological discoveries come from trash. A lot of the things that we come to understand past it's cultures like is- Ancient trash. Yeah, is like dump, Dump sites, like when, if if like an archaeologist can find like where they threw all the stuff away, like that's where they want to go. Yeah. Because that's where the most stuff is going to be in the most. All the pots area. that weren't really that great. Yeah. So it's kind of just thinking about a lot of times, like with kind of thinking about a lot of things that we think are people going to see, people will see in the future isn't necessarily what we plan are them. training okay. are, are planning to present to them. Right. They might end up finding our trash and have a completely di different interpretation of our culture, what we think we are because we're showing off all these great paintings that might end up, I don't know where they're gonna end up, but at least I know there's this, always gonna the be- The styrofoam box there's always gonna be just like, as long. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there's always gonna be like a dump. Yeah. <laughs> Those aren't going away. That's really uh, uplifting. I, yeah. I think maybe we should end it at that. It's a great place to take questions. <laughs> there's always gonna be a dump. There's Good. always gonna be somewhere you gotta put your trash. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. Did you, question? <laughs> I'm only if you want. If you want. Yeah. yeah. Could, I know we don't have a lot of time, but could both of you, because you've demonstrated it beautifully, but can you talk about the role of uh, humor in your work? Mm -hmm. Like, how do you just, like, what's the purpose of I it? I feel like we come from very different places. Like, we get paired together a lot, but we do approach our 
pretty differently, I think. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like my humor is sort of incidental. Like, um, I say things and people think I'm joking. Um, and I'm not, um, but it's just, it's easier to say, yeah, it's a joke. So, um, I just run with it. Yeah. How about you? Um, and I like, I think it's a lot of my humor, like comes from like discomfort or kind of like re like seeing where things don't really match up and where you might think things are one way, but they're the other way or they're like both or, or kind of like, it's kind of like comedy exists within or not comedy, but humor kind of exists in this moment where like. It's a lot like art, where you can't really say what's funny. You just kind of have that sense. You have to experience of what's it. What's funny? Or? You have to experience it, or um, it's kind of like <clears throat> there's kind of like a, a gap in understanding is what makes something. Oh yeah. But here's the, here's the, here's the big thing is like you can't explain a joke is is the thing. It's like as much as you, you can, you can, but it's not funny anymore. <laughs> it kind of loses everything. So yeah. It's like trying to find that kind of moment where like. You can't explain what you're looking at, right. but you can, you think you, you can. You can get it. You have like an idea of it, but you can't grasp it. You can't okay. like hold on to it, if that makes sense. A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> Were there any other yeah. questions? I know we covered a lot. So I was gonna say, I mean, one's Houston based, one's Dallas based. Yes, I've heard dad. <laughs> <laughs> Hi dad. <laughs> Been a sort of a well, there's a Dallas Fort Worth competition or whatever is there? relationship, but it's, it's does that carry over in the art world? The Dallas v. Houston concept, Dallas v. Houston. I think there's artists. different rules, like we don't have fire marshals the way you guys do. <laughs> <laughs> there's no fire marshals in the entire city, <laughs> yeah. No, they just they evacuated after the flooding, they just else. gave up. Pretty They're much. like, it's too wet here, it's too wet. We need we to find just, a job somewhere, right? Else. They just moved uh, north to Dallas, and now you've got double. <laughs> that so. might be the problem. Maybe you're on this one, <laughs> right? Maybe. Uh, I don't know. What else is there competition? No, I don't think so. I don't feel like I also like, I feel like. Part of me is like I'm also just I'm trying to I'm more worried about. I think they're different environments. Yeah, and maybe I feel like I'm like I'm just more worried about myself. More yeah, than, yeah, more I'm just worried about. I time. know my own house it's is falling apart. Like, I don't really care enough, what like, everybody yeah. else in Dallas is doing, what everybody else in Houston <laughs> is doing. It's too much stress to try to figure out what everyone else is doing. I, like I'm stressed enough about trying to figure out what I have to do next or what I want to do next. Right. I don't know. Yeah, I think we're all just focused on ourselves, like good millennials <laughs> would be. You know? <laughs> so we're not really thinking. Yeah. Uh, are there any other questions from the audience? We must have explained everything. We must have really <laughs> covered it. I don't feel like I have, but it seems like everyone has a good it idea. Was really <laughs> Thank you so much, guys.